Hello everyone, this is Fabri Loen, welcome back. Today I decided to do something a little different, I'm not reviewing any games or uh, anime series or anything like that. I wanted to do something that I wanted to do since I've been making videos and since I created my channel on YouTube and it's about sharing video game memories. I think that it's a great, great thing, one of the best parts of the entire experience, other than playing obviously, and it's about talking and sharing our memories and our emotions after playing a game. I always wanted to do that and I always did that with my friends and others but I also wanted to do it here on my channel so I decided to start actually with a genre that I'm not really familiar with but I also wanted to talk about these experiences. They're quite funny in a way I think and really interesting so, as you know, I'm a big RPG survival horror fan, I love those games, they're my favorite, but I also love other genres, like uh, first person shooters, action, adventure game, old school uh, platform games on the NES and all systems, they're all great, I love those, but this genre that I want to talk about, I'm not very familiar with, I don't like it very much, but sometimes it can actually surprise me. I'm talking about fighting games. I am not a big fan of fighting games, I have to say, uh, I don't like them very much. But, here and there, sometimes there are games that really, really caught my attention and get me really addicted. Um, there are games that I cannot stop playing, even though I'm not a huge fan of genre per se. Like, but how did I actually came into contact with fighting games? That's also another it's a story thing. Because I grew up obviously in the late 80s, early 90s, and I was a kid when I started playing video games. And my first season was the NES, of course. And the NES is not famous for its fighting games. It, it doesn't have any of them, I think. I'm talking about classic tournament one versus one fighting game. The only one that I saw and played once and I didn't like it very much was the Double Dragon. It wasn't Double Dragon 1, I think, option that you can play against the same character with two players and it was nothing special, but it was already something. The real way that you can experience fighting games at the time, before the 16-bit era when you, we started to have great games like Street Fighter 2 and others, was obviously at the arcades. Probably when I was growing up, it was already past the golden age of arcades, but they were still very popular in a way. They still had the best looking games. But at the same time, I think this was a problem common in every arcade, and that's the very funny thing about it. Um, like, if you saw the Happy Console Gamer Arcade Tales uh, video, it's about these same problems. I mean, arcades were really weird places to go. And especially if you were like me, I was a young kid, so I was going to an arcade, it was always big fights, drug dealing problems, it was always the same problem over and over again, really weird people, so in my place I'm not, I didn't go very often to the arcade. There was especially one who was infamous for having problems all night. Every day that we got notice that someone was arrested, someone was having drugs and all that, and it was really annoying. Like, I just wanted to go there playing a game. And why it was a gathering place for all these creeps? I don't know. But it's common everywhere. It's not just in North America, it was the same in Italy, it was probably the same in the UK and everywhere else. It's, I think it's already a funny thing that all the arcades have the same problem. But there was an arcade actually that I managed to go pretty often and it was the same the place where I went um, in the mountains with my family to ski and everything else. And the only hangout place for me basically was the arcade. I gathered there with my friends and played some games. We can actually do that because there weren't weird people. It was a normal small arcade. And there were some nice games. I have to say my personal favorite arcade games is still Alien vs Predator. I love games like Dash and like that side scroll fantasy style adventure game. I love that and I love shooting games like I remember playing the Star Wars game once at the airport. I played the Jurassic Park one. I loved that. It was amazing. The House of the Dead was probably my golden and 
age of arcade games and was very good at it. But that's another story already. And was brilliant. That's probably one of my all-time favorite and the game that I really mastered in the arcade. But going to the arcade, you obviously encounter fighting games, and that's the first time that I actually saw real fighting games, not shit like Double Dragon, that the fighting game option. Um, I don't even remember the games I found. It was probably like some games of the Neo Geo, something like that. They were amazing, like in terms of graphics, sounds, and. Uh, speed and everything. I never saw anything like that. I mean, from an NES point of view, arcade was really another universe, not another planet. Imagine the the fast action, um, the characters design, the music. Everything was great. The problem was that I was really, really not a fighting game player. Also because I didn't have the time, I didn't have the experience. When you went to the arcade and tried to play a fighting game, you were always against a really strong opponent and they will just trash you and you have to leave to make space for other players they, because they were always the most crowded ones especially after the release of Street Fighters and other games and also I didn't have enough money to spend at the arcade so I just play once in a while and not for a long period I didn't have the experience to master the game so I didn't enjoy them very much but it all changed when we entered the 16-bit era when we all got our beloved Super Nintendo and I started to play Street Fighter 2 with a good friend of mine that he actually owned the game, I didn't own it back then so we started to play, we hang out every day after school we all, like, one day it was at my place, the other I was at his place and we play a lot of video games well, we're supposed to study, but who cares we had other things to do, more important things to do, so we play a lot of Street Fighter 2 at first, and he was better than me, simply because he had the game and he had the chance to play more, he had more experience, he, was, he knows better moves than I did, but I was a worthy opponent for him, and I remember I really, was really good with Sagat and Ken, well, it was amazing with Ryu and, and Bison, I remember, uh, and Zangief, we got those epic battles. But again, I didn't master the game too much. I mean, I enjoyed it very much, but this isn't the game that really um, made me fanatic for a while for a fighting game. I wanted to buy the game because like, I really enjoyed playing with my friend, but it was too good for me, so I wanted to um, become better, to be, um, get at this insane level. So, Because like um, 10 times, he won like 7 or 8, but I wanted to be better. So I went to my usual video game store and wanted to buy Street Fighter. Uh, Street Fighter 2, of course. But it was sold out. I couldn't buy it. I was really pissed off. And well, since I was there, it was quite an occasion for me buying a game during the year that was not my birthday or Christmas. So. I didn't want to waste this golden occasion, so well, let's buy something else, let's see what they have. So I started looking around the Super Nintendo area, and at one point, I saw something that really caught my attention. There was this black box, and I was looking at, what is this Killer Instinct? Hmm, this title is very promising. That is the game that really hooked me up for a, a long time on, for a fighting game. I took the box and looking around, I mean, it was, well, this is really cool, with big robots on the cover, the title sounds really promising, it's all black, seems very dark. Look behind the, the box, there was like the four images or something, and the only way to, play, to buy a game back then, and you didn't know what game was good and what game was bad. We all know the story, we all went through that. So I said, well, let's give it a try, it seems like a good fighting game, I want to have my own fighting game, I want to master a fighting game. You know, being able to say that I mastered fighting game. So I didn't go with Killer Instinct. I didn't know what it was because I never saw the arcade the arcade game uh, back then. I went home. I love, I have to say, I love the um, black cartridge. I lo always love when Nintendo have the different color cartridge for its game. I love the Zelda golden ones. Um, I love the Doom imported one that was red and I love the black one with Killer Instinct. It's so cool. Um, I always, I'm always surprised that they never did the gold cartridge for Link to the Past. I've said the Super Nintendo. 
But anyways, I started playing Killer Instinct and I love it from the first second. It was amazing. And I have to say, I prefer that to Street Fighter 2. Probably because I owned it, so I managed to master it. Um, but I love Street Fighter 2, of course. It's a classic fighting game and one of the best for the Super Nintendo. But I actually prefer Killer Instinct for several reasons. First of all, the most important thing, I think, it I prefer the gameplay. The game mechanics was better to me. I prefer it because, as you know, Killer Instinct, it's all about combos and combo breaking. So when an opponent is attacking you, you can actually interrupt its combo and counterattack. I love that mechanism. It requires a lot of practice, but at the time I was a master in doing that. I love the graphics and the music. The graphics were very dark, very, very good for Super Nintendo standard. It was amazing. It was amazing as the potential of the Super Nintendo standard. Well, that's the reason why I love the Super Nintendo. It's so over the top with the graphics, the music is so real and so incredible. I love some of the stages, my favorite was like where you're fighting on the top of the skyscraper and at the end you can actually knock the opponent over and it fell into a car, I mean I love that. The characters were like you know, typical fighting games and my personal favorite were TJ Combo that I always call Iron Mike, it was, ju it was just Mike Tyson to me. And I particularly like Glacius, even though I wasn't particularly good with him, because I love the idea of an ice man, an ice creature. But the character I was the best with was actually Cinder, the flame guy. And that was the only character that can actually do an ultra combo with him. I was at the point that other friends of mine actually bought the game. Not the Street Fighter 2 friend, actually. It, didn't, it never actually owned Killer Instinct. So it, it, we were able actually to, when we gather around all of us, making really great mm, tournament be between each other. And we, at the point, it was funny that I was so good with Cinder that my friends actually said, like, well, you cannot use a Cinder. You're, it's not fair. You have to pick someone else. <laughs> it was funny. So I practiced with other characters like TJ Combo, Glacius, Jago, uh, Saber Wolf. I was good with all of them, but not excellent as I Cinder was the only one to actually do the ultra combo, but was still very good with the others. So I play a lot and a lot of Killer Instinct. I absolutely love it. That's my 16-bit era fighting game. I didn't own Street Fighter back then. It, for me, it was Killer Instinct. And it's funny that I play so much of that game, even though I'm not particularly interested in fighting games, especially like, as you know, I love stories in video games. I love characters. I love character development. I love character interaction. So there's nothing of this. There's none of them into a fighting game. It's, if there is a story in fighting games, I really don't care and don't get it. To me, a fighting game should be just about fighting, about action, not about the story. Like, I didn't know that Street Fighter and Killer Instinct actually had stories. I mean, what's the point? I mean, I understand it's, not, it's just like Doom, for example. To me, Doom should be how the original was. You just start and start shooting. Not There is no complicated story, there is no drama, nothing like that. You don't need it for these kind of games. That's how I think about fighting games. You just need two characters and start beating the shit out of each other. That's the point. And that's why I love Killer Instinct so much, because to me, especially back then, there was nothing in the way. Just fight, fight, fight. And that was amazing. So, this is the game that really caught my attention in the 16-bit era and distract me from RPGs and Mega Man and other games that I, must, must like, that I love and I used to play much more. And I was surprised. So, and that's just the beginning because after when we enter the next generation I will discover more games. But I will talk in the next video because I don't want to bombard you with all of this information and um, with all the games, also because they're all different stories and different occasions. So, here's part one of my fighting game memories. Um, tune in for next time for me to discover the PlayStation era and my experience with some of the best fighting games that I ever played. I'll see you next time.